This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Architecture and fashion are intimately connected in so many ways. In this video, we'll explore how they may have sprang from the same point in history. We'll also explore my favorite fashion retail store in Chicago to discuss how it builds on this history. And we'll explore how architecture imprints itself in the fashion world today. Stay tuned. Theorists like the great Gottfried Semper believed that fashion and architecture actually sprang from the same human impulses. His theory of Bekleidung describes how creative arts, which originated from human needs like shelter, clothing, or food, all relate through the idea of craft. Originally, nomadic tribes lived in tents made of cloth or animal furs. These are also the same materials used for clothes. So in a way, shelter and clothing were made from the same craftsperson, the weaver. Semper also noted that the language in his native German used to describe buildings and clothing, and they often share origins and roots. He links the German word divand, meaning the visible part of the wall, and gewand, which means the woven material or clothing. People like Frank Lloyd Wright took ideas like this even a step further. Of course, he would design dresses for his occupants to wear as part of the unified aesthetic of his home designs, but he also called himself the weaver and he even named his construction technology for buildings like the Enos House his textile block houses. With this system, he proclaimed, a building for the first time may be lightly fabricated, complete of mono material, literally woven into a pattern or design, as was the oriental rug. So it's not just that he designed clothes to match the architecture, he also thought of the architecture like the design of clothes, and that building materials were like cloth. He would also look back at his houses made out of brick and make parallels to weaving and fabric to the brick material building skins. The grid made out of the grout lines in the brick are akin to the warp and the weft, or the grid of the threads or yarn that's woven into the fabric. Brick also plays an important role in one of my favorite fashion retail spaces here in Chicago. It's called Notra. Welcome, come on in. And I sat down with the designer to tell me more. My name is Thomas Kelly. I am a partner in Norman Kelly. We are an architecture and design collaborative based here in Chicago and New Orleans. Today we are in Notre, the West Loop neighborhood of Chicago. This is uh, about a 5,000 square foot clothing store. Uh, offers men's and women's clothing and in addition, uh, sells publications uh, and other lifestyle goods. Let's take a quick look at the plan of the Notre store. This is the public facing zone of the store. And then there are three main parts, the front, the middle, and the back. The back is the space of the library where books about design, fashion, and architecture are on display. A hallway filled with shelves for skincare products take you to that back space. The middle zone is for the display of fashion goods. It's a nine square grid that works with the existing timber structure that's laid out in a square grid. Here's the space for the fitting rooms, the women's clothes, the cave, men's clothes, the point of sale space, and of course the area for shoes. The front is where the magic of the bricks are found. It's an elongated entry with a configuration called a stramp. That's a combination of a stair and a ramp. Not only is this a clever solution to the problem of creating an accessible entry into the space that's three feet higher from the street, the challenge of making it from bricks adds another layer of complexity. When you see it, it seems unconventional and unfamiliar. Architects use this type of form often uh, when dealing with kind of large groupings of people. Uh, it can both accommodate movement, but also stillness. The unit is sort of familiar in that it is a brick paver, which means it's uh, slightly thinner than a standard brick. And it's reclaimed from a demolished structure um, within kind of the Chicagoland region uh, that has been repurposed for, uh, for the Stramp. One of the challenges with the space was trying to accommodate an accessible entry that didn't require or required the least amount of handrails. An important consideration in all of architectural design is making sure that changes in floor height don't make it overly difficult for anyone to traverse regardless of their physical abilities. A guiding standard is that floor changes of a certain height or steepness require handrails to protect people from falling or to aid in pulling oneself up. However, if a slope remains under 1 to 20, meaning that for every 20 feet long, it only goes up one foot high, then there's no need to have any handrails at all. 
And for this space, the lack of handrails means that the space is continuous and unbroken, so it's perfect for activities and events. Getting 5,000 bricks to create four ramps that are at a 1 to 20 slope in a continuous bond pattern is, is pretty challenging. That took a lot of precision um, with a material that's imprecise. I think a nice detail, really the only detail of the stramp, is uh, referred to as a, a butt joint or a dry butt joint. And that's when we don't introduce mortar in between the bricks. And that is to create kind of a seamless continuation between a slope surface and a flat surface. The idea is once you enter the space, you can meander through this stair ramp condition and not feel pressured into, into buying anything and then continue that meander through product specific rooms in a similar way. In addition to selling goods directly, the store also supports online sales. In this way, it's also a curation of fashion and goods built around a lifestyle. If you ever wanted to sell anything online or just showcase your creative ideas or lifestyle, you should consider Squarespace. I'm in the process of building a site for architecture with Stuart there, and I cannot recommend it enough. I'm really pleased with the workflow and the ease of making something that's absolutely beautiful at the same time as it's functional. I initially chose Squarespace for all the portfolio templates that they have, which could be easily used for showcasing videos and descriptions. The galleries are perfect for this. It's also perfect for an architect or designer or any kind of creative person looking to show off their work. It was also important to me that that platform could grow in case I wanted to sell something. And Squarespace can host a merch store or sell tickets or anything all in one place. And marketing is made super easy by being able to automatically push website content through to your social media channels. So check out squarespace.com for a free trial, set things up. And then when you're ready to launch, go ahead and go to squarespace.com slash Stuart Hicks to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. The link is down in the description below. The way that the rooms are connected in the space is called an enfilade, or connecting a series of rooms without a corridor. This was common in European houses and palaces, but also has become associated with museums, especially ones like the Louvre or the Uffizi, which are housed in buildings that used to be a home or a palace. So the store is laid out like a house or a museum, but not just a museum of objects that you can't touch or purchase. But there is some art in here that's displayed for other purposes. Throughout the space, you'll see a variety of kind of artworks um, that the owner collects that are being displayed in the space. One, maybe one of my favorites being this piece here by Terrell Winston. I think it makes the kind of the most direct reference to a term which is streetwear, a basketball netting, um, maybe being kind of the clearest or kind of most direct uh, relationship to the street. I think it's also interesting that term, both in terms of maybe fashion and space, is, is a bit dated and has kind of outgrown itself. We can't talk about streetwear and architecture without paying our respects to the late Virgil Abloh. He was born in nearby Rockford, Illinois, and he studied architecture here in Chicago at IIT. He passed away just this year after a whirlwind life that consistently brought fashion and architecture together in creative and innovative ways. And he also partnered with this Notre store on a charity raffle at some point. In Abloh's Men's Fall Winter 2021 fashion show for Louis Vuitton, he designed a space that directly referenced motifs from the architect Mies van der Rohe. These included using some furniture designed by Mies, like his Barcelona stools, but also the green marble, the travertine floor, the chrome cross-shaped columns, and the gridded ceiling. Mies also served as inspiration for this space at Notre. The storefront itself, a lot of the details are just borrowing from um, uh, Mies' post office uh, in Federal Plaza. We just felt like it's kind of a tidy steel and glass detail. During Abloh's Mies-inspired show, some of the more adventurous pieces were jackets that were engulfed in 3D buildings. Each of these skyline jackets are themed. There's a Paris one with Notre Dame Cathedral and the Eiffel Tower, and there's a skyscraper one that, of course, includes a few towers found in Chicago, like the Hancock Tower. These are easily compared to an image from the 1930s from a Beaux-Arts ball, where architects in New York came dressed as their most famous building designs. It seems like the combination of architecture and fashion sometimes allows for the lighter side of architecture to come out, even if they don't look so happy while they're wearing their costumes. But not all the collaborations are so removed from everyday life. While Abloh attended graduate school at IIT, they were finishing up the building for the student center there that was designed by Rem Kolhas and OMA. 
OMA has a long-term collaboration with the brand Prada to experiment with and design fashion retail experiences across the world. So while architecture and fashion are deeply connected conceptually and historically, the space of clothing retail also has its interesting moments. Some of the more experimental from this collaboration include the Prada Transformer, which is a steel object that gets moved and reoriented depending on the site and the activity. It's a building that's flipped around like a toy. And depending on which side is down, it can be used for a fashion show stage or a movie theater or an exhibition space. In New York, OMA designed the flagship retail store for Prada. It features an entire first level with almost nothing on it. It's a large public space for events and public happenings. Then there's a terraced warped floor that takes you down to the basement where the retail actually happens. Along the way, there are mannequins or other displays that sometimes showcase the clothes in various ways. The retail is bound up with other public activities beyond the purchasing of goods. It's a way to bring people together. It connects the streetscape and the life of the city. Fashion retail is often accompanied with a display window. In the past, these were merely static compositions or still lives of scenes that were designed to attract customers. But this one is supersized and includes lives on the display. You can come and hear a lecture, come and listen to music, um, or just uh, meander on your phone before moving into the, uh, the store proper. And then we move back here into uh, a lounge or library where publications are sold. And one can sit down and take a seat. And some of these uh, moments of reflection kind of uh, offer the opportunity to look back again on rooms that you've already kind of entered. And so if we kind of take a look back down that way, we can see through the women's wear, the apothecary, all the way back to the point of sale where we began. If you enjoyed this video, please consider giving it a like. Subscribe to the channel and hitting that bell is a great way to show support. Make sure that you don't miss any of the upcoming videos. They come out every Thursday, but if you're dying for more, check out some of these other ones that you might also find interesting. See you over there.